Hi, my name is Hung Wo, and I'm one of the members of the VMD.net. Uh, I'm currently a third year medical student um, in the United States, going to be a fourth year within the next month. Uh, so recently I took the Step 2 CS about a month ago uh, and I just received my score back and fortunately I passed the exam so I can confidently pass down my knowledge to you guys and some of you guys, hopefully some of you guys will find it helpful and so you guys can pass the exam too. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about the general information about the exam and then I'm going to go a little bit more in depth uh, about what I did uh, and what I studied uh, for the exam. Um, okay. So first, I'm just going to answer a couple of general questions about the exam. So the first one is, how long do you spend to study for the exam? So in the United States, uh, all medical students are prepared for the exam uh, since the day they enter medical school. Uh, so the first two uh, years of medical school, they always have this OSCE. Uh, so basically, our fake encounters with the patients, uh, they learn how to take the medical, medical history how to do the physical exam, uh, how to come to the diagnosis and write the patient notes. So medical students in the United States are well prepared for the exam. So that's why the pass rate is very high of 90% uh, for the medical students in the United States. Uh, however, uh, for international students, a lot of people have trouble with this exam because they are not used to the format of the exam. Uh, so for myself, I only spend a week uh, to study for the exam. Uh, but for a lot of you guys, I think uh, you need to practice a lot more, uh, so maybe a month, uh, and you need someone to practice with, uh, so find someone, you know, practice uh, probably every weekend, uh, just do, you know, two, three hours, four, five, six hours, wherever time you guys have, uh, just really practice until you feel comfortable taking the, uh, the, exam, the HPI and also the uh, past medical history. Um, come up with a, you know, an appropriate uh, physical exam and how to close um, encounter with your patients. Uh, so a month should be long enough to study for the exam. Uh, and the second question is, uh, what do you use for the exam? So I'm just going to recommend you use one source and I think this is good enough uh, for you guys to pass the exam and everyone knows about it. Uh, so it's the uh, first eight step to CS. It will have everything that you need. You don't need any other resource, just one book will, you know, help you pass the exam. And the third one is, what exactly is Step 2 CES tested you for? Uh, so there are three components that they uh, that you have to pass in order to pass the Step 2 CES. And these uh, portion will be written on your um, report. So the first one is ICE, uh, basically it's Integrated uh, Clinical Encounter. Uh, basically, this tests your ability to gather the uh, medical history uh, and come up with a good differential diagnosis uh, in your note uh, taken in your notes part. Uh, that's you have you have ten minutes to basically write the notes. And the second component is CIS, uh, so it stands for communication and interpersonal skills. Basically, this is a skill where you can connect to the patient, how empathetic you are. Uh, your ability to counsel your patients, uh, your ability to answer those difficult questions like am I going to die doctor or what am I going to do, you know, like things like that. And uh, SEP, which is the last portion, uh, basically is spoken English proficiency. Uh, basically this means how good is your English? Uh, can the patient understand you or can your notes uh, make any, does your notes make any sense? Uh, nobody will fail this part. So uh, out of the three portions, uh, most difficult uh, part will be the first part which is the integrated clinical encounter uh, that's where most people feel either they don't have um, a way to gather enough data uh, or their note is subpar it doesn't make any sense uh, so most people will fail because of this part uh, the other two parts as long as the patient can understand you uh, as long as you can show a little bit of sympathy or empathy um, you'll be fine okay So I found this diagram online and I really like this because it can tell you exactly how much time you have um, that you can spend outside the door, inside the room, and at the desk uh, writing the notes. Uh, so basically step 2 CS will have 12 clinical encounters and you will have 15 minutes for each encounter and 10 minutes for the paperwork after that. Um, so if you finish your encounter before the 15 minutes, you can actually use extra time to work your paperwork which I highly recommend uh, a lot of you guys to do this because it will take a lot more time to write the notes and actually see the patient. Uh, some of us are really slow typers 
and some of the diagnosis will you know need some time to think about what is the best diagnosis for the encounter that you just uh, encountered. Um, so at the beginning of the exam, you'll be given 12 blue sheets. Uh, so these are basically scrap papers uh, with your name on it. Uh, and uh, it will be collected at the end of each encounter. So before each encounter, you'll be placed in front of the door, outside the door. Uh, and there'll be an announcement to let you know uh, when your encounter begins. And once you hear the announcement, you can start reading the, inform the information posted in front of the door. Most people will immediately knock on the door and walk inside and start their encounters. However, these are the people that are really familiar with the OSCE or the exam uh, format, uh, or some of, them, some of them are just really smart. Uh, for the rest of us, you know, just to be safe, I highly recommend you guys to use at least 45 seconds to one minute to organize your blue sheet, uh, orga uh, organize your thoughts, you know, write down quick notes on your blue sheet about what physical exam that you will do, what important question, the person in positive question, the person in negative question that you will ask, what are the possible diagnoses that are related to the chief complaint? For example, if the, you know, the encounters, the chief complaint is about headaches. You can think about what are the causes for the headache. It could be a brain tumor. It could be an intracranial hemorrhage. It could be a, uh, you know, a general tension headache. It could be migraine. It could be cluster headache. So organize your thought and write on your blue sheet. Um, and I will... Uh, you know, make some more videos about what exactly uh, you should write on your blue sheet to keep yourself organized. Um, of course, there'll be some cheap complaints that are really vague, for example, weight loss, fatigue, that you won't be able to pinpoint what exact information that would be important so to put down your blue sheet. But if you practice enough, uh, you will know what to do uh, to get the quiz, you know, the history quickly and figure out um, what to do during the encounter. So basically, you have to practice until you're comfortable enough to take a detailed HPI and the past medical history uh, within the uh, given time. So according to the diagram, you should not spend a lot more uh, more than you know like four minutes on the past medical history and the HPI. So four minutes over here and four minutes over here. Uh, you should not be spending more time than that. Okay, and then you can do the general, you know, general physical exam. Uh, should be about one minute or so. Uh, do the physical exam. Uh, you know, these two should not be more than four minutes. And you can save about two to three minutes, basically, to uh, close with your patient. And then you get out and you do the patient note. So this is a diagram that I taken directly from the first eight uh, step two CS. Um, so basically, it show you what's the introductions will be uh, some of the things that you should do before uh, any encounters uh, so for me before i start talking to the patient the first thing i would do is i knock on the door and i use the little hand sanitizer uh, they have either a dispenser or a little bottle with a pump uh, to use so you can foam in uh, but again don't forget to smile uh, you know a smile can go a long way uh, with your patients and then i just use a patient last name uh, to verify that it's the right patient and then i introduce myself with the name and the title and the they shake their hands and then uh, and also maintain a good eye contact with them. And then after that, I ask them, is it okay if I can drip you to make you a bit more comfortable? Uh, I ask them, is it okay if I can sit down to chat with, with them a little bit? Uh, and then I ask them about the chief complaint so I can start saying, you know, what brought you in today? Or uh, how can I help you today? Um, and as soon as I tell you the complaint, you should express your sympathy right away. You just say, I'm really sorry to hear that. You know, that must have been really annoying to deal with. Uh, basically, just show uh, a little bit of empathy so you can connect to the patient a little bit better. Uh, and one of the common uh, mistakes that I see a lot of international students uh, do is that um, they immediately jump into the closed-ended questions. Uh, for example, the patient say, I have, you know, abdominal pain. And then they ask, where is the abdominal pain? Um, no, you should, the first thing you should ask when they tell you, uh, I have an abdominal pain, is to ask them, tell me more about the abdominal pain. As soon as you tell them that, it's an open-ended questions, and the patient will start telling you all the inf information that you need without uh, even without you even asking them. Um, so always start it out with the open-ended question instead of the closed-ended questions. So for an example, I would knock on the door, I synthesize my hands, and I would use the patient last name. For example, the patient name is uh, Paul Corner. I would say, uh, "Are you Mr. Corner?" 
And the patient will say yes, and then I will say, I will continue with, my name is Dr. Vo, and I'm one of the doctors that work here. It's very nice meeting you. And then you shake hand with the patient, and I give them a smile. And then after that, I ask them, is it okay if I put this drape on you to make you a bit more comfortable? Uh, and then they say, yes, you put the drape on them. And after that, you say, is it okay if we can sit down and we can uh, start chatting? Um, and then when you sit down, you say, how can I help you today? And they will say, oh, I have this problem. And you immediately say, I'm really sorry to hear that. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about your so-and-so? So that's how you should uh, start your encounter every single time. Uh, and make sure you practice enough that it's become natural uh, so you don't have to waste time uh, on just introductions. Okay, so this is the information that I um, usually write on my blue sheet, uh, basically to keep me organized and also help me get a detailed HPI and also that I don't forget uh, to do the stuff that I'm supposed to do. For example, uh, summarize the HPI at the end uh, to the patient uh, to make sure that I thank you them uh, for letting me, you know, examine them. Uh, also tell them about the initial management, uh, also counsel them, uh, ask them if they have any additional questions or concerns. Uh, so uh, before I even walk into the room, uh, I spend 45 seconds to a minute, uh, basically to get information from the uh, encounter. So I want to get their name, the age, and also the chief complaints. Uh, and for the vital signs, I only write what is abnormal. Uh, so it is usually really helpful if you learn what is a normal vital sign so that when you see something abnormal, uh, you know exactly what it is. Uh, so uh, and make sure that you guys know the Fahrenheit and also the Celsius degree, uh, what is considered to be high, uh, to be a fever, low grade fever, what high fever, uh, and you know the blood pressures, what is hypotensive versus hypertensive, tachycardia versus bradycardia. Um, and you know, like oxygen uh, saturations. Okay, so uh, I read the information for 45 uh, seconds to a minute and it helped me, uh, you know, exactly what physical exam that I'm gonna do, uh, what is on my differential. Uh, for example, if someone come in with uh, a little bit of hypertensive and they, you know, they have some weight loss, so I'm thinking about uh, maybe it could be a hyperthyroid problem. So on my physical exam, I immediately uh, write down like deep tendon reflex. Uh, so I gotta make sure that I check the deep ten uh, tendon reflex or check the skin to see if the skin is, you know, like uh, it's how is their skin looks like. Um, so it's really helpful uh, to write down what exactly physical exam that you wanna do and what uh, what's on your differential diagnosis. So that once you're in the room, uh, everything will go a little bit smoother. Uh, so the first part that I have over here is my HPI. Uh, so basically, you can use any mnemonics uh, to help you uh, with your, uh, you know, your HPI. So I use old cards. Basically, it's onset, location, durations, character, alleviating, aggravating, and associated symptoms, uh, radiation, what's the timing, and what's severity. And sometimes, uh, if someone comes in with a cough, uh, you know, the, you can ask about the sputum or the discharge, so I use a mnemonic like A, B, C, D, E, so what's the amount, uh, is there any blood in it, uh, what is the color, and how long has it been, you know, coughing up or having the uh, discharge. So uh, immediately to that one, I have the pertinent positive and the pertinent negative uh, questions. These are probably the most important uh, questions that you will ask because it will help you um, figure out what is the right diagnosis uh, and also the review system. Uh, so um, I will make a separate video to talk about this part because this is very important and, um, and you have to learn uh, how to get the review system quickly uh, without wasting any time at all. And then I go to the past medical history. Uh, so uh, we use a PEMFOS. There's a lot more mnemonics for this, but I like to keep it uh, as you know short as possible. Uh, so basically the PEMFOS is stand for the past surgical history, past medical history, allergy, uh, what is the medication that they're taking, uh, are they allergic to any medication, F stand for the uh, family history, O stand for ob guy, uh, and S is for social history. Make sure you get the three most important part, uh, which is smoking, alcohol, and drugs. Uh, you ask everyone about this one. And the, uh, um, you know, the other part, uh, which is the toes. Uh, so the mnemonics for the social history is sad toes. Uh, so for the toes part, 
uh, you can ask in some cases, uh, but it's really not important. Um, so I ask about is a recent trauma, recent uh, traveling, what's their occupations, uh, who is they say staying with at home, uh, what, do you have the chance to exercise, what about sex, uh, are they sexually active, uh, what is about stress. And then the fourth part would be the extra part. Uh, basically, these are the things that you should do uh, and we always forget it. So always write it out so that you won't forget it. Uh, so you won't lose any point. Make sure you summarize the HPI after they get the HPI so that the patient say, uh, yes, this is the HPI that I've given to you. And then make sure you thank them uh, and you tell them about the initial management. Uh, you Don't forget to counsel them about smoking, you know, alcohol or drug use uh, or, you know, safe sex practice like using condom when they're having sex. Uh, if they ask ask you any question or concerns, um, so this this is my blue sheet basically. Mm -hmm.